Richter's Cup for Hearthstone. I'm joined with Lothar and Aqua to talk a little bit about the, our upcoming match. It should be a good one. We've got Life Coach from Team Nylon and yeah. Raynad from Team Baby Rage, also known, <laughs> formerly known as Tempo Storm. So uh, it's going to be a really fun series. I think one of these guys going to top eight, definitely deservingly in their group. But, uh, you know, more importantly, who do you think has the edge here? Let's, let's start off the discussion with you, Aqua. You got to see uh, the past couple of series. What do, what do you think so far of, of Raynad's play? I think Raynad's played really well. He played very well last series. I didn't really see anything glaring out of the ordinary from him. So he's been play, playing pretty solid. It looks like he's been playing decks that he's comfortable with. He's very comfortable with that Freeze Mage. I've never known Raynad personally to play Freeze Mage. Maybe that's like knowledge from my part but yeah he played that game really well but life coach on the other hand is life coach and it's and me and Nitch briefly touched on it but it's going to be like a control versus almost like an aggro kind of a uh, game coming up yeah i yeah. think rainnet uh definitely loves playing combo decks in general he loved miracle uh he actually re played freeze mage at sea story cup too where he plays top eight a very hard tournament and uh, more importantly, it's like he really loves the math combat. You know, the, the fact that he can calculate lethal in very specific scenarios. That's where he's at his best. Well, for me, when it comes to this match, uh, you know, I'm, I'm favoring always life coach because he, he's my teammate. But in this scenario, uh, his decks, I feel like are really weak against um, Reynard's um, whole lineup. Mm. So Reynard will be, fav uh, will be favors here in this match. All right, well, if Reynad brought good decks for his life coach, sometimes that's just how Conquest does. You just line up, you know, the 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 Hunter against Handlock, and somehow you just overpower him because you have yeah. more direct damage. Or say he gets Freeze, Freeze Mage, Mage against right, Handlock. Against it's Handlock. It's like, what if he just ends up targeting that weak deck and then being able to, to do it? But, of course, uh, who knows, man? I mean, I feel like... Sometimes you just get uh, the opportunity to take advantage of a weak matchup and win it, and all of a sudden the matchup flips. And because you won with the weak matchup, maybe that's not the weak point anymore. Paladin can can handle Zoo sometimes. Or, that's you know, true. You, you never well, know. We saw that in the first uh, match of Life Coach, right? He won with the mm -hmm. Paladin. Uh, I mean, we, Druid he won with against Druid Paladin, against Paladin. Right? He was not favored at all, and he somewhat uh, somehow managed to squeeze the win, mm -hmm. and that was very important in that match. So without that crucial win in the, in the first game, he wouldn't be able to win the whole series, I think. Yeah, yeah and enough. Life Coach is a player that, as you said, has shown us he can do that. So if anyone's going to be put in that scenario with their wins, it's going to be him. He's going to take advantage of these matchups. Well, the Paladin might be the key to victory against Freeze Mage here, because he plays cards like uh, Kel'Thuzad, which is really amazing against board That's creatures right. from, uh, from Freeze Mage. <laughs> then That's Blizzard right. and Flamestrike is basically non-existent uh, non non -non when it comes to playability. And um, I'm not sure how many healing cards he plays in the, in the, in the Paladin, but I think it's like Lay on Hands At and, least lay on hands. and Heal Bot. Yeah. I'm not I'm sure about sure that. I'm pretty sure I saw Heal Bot, yeah. I'm yeah. pretty sure I saw Heal Bot. So, you know, when the Alexstrasza hits and you heal for 16, I think that's kind of, that's kind of okay. And he also plays two big game hunters in Warlock and in the um, in the Druid. So right, right. Oh, right. Which, he plays which two, might, two in the Druid as well. Yeah. Oh, okay. Might not be the most useful against, you know, Zoo and some other things, but yeah. he does have Dr. Boom in it. So you never know that's if true. he ends up stabilizing the point where he can capitalize on such things. I'm also looking forward. That's also Malganis, probably, right? Right. I, I, I mean, I, I assume We never so. saw it. But you have uh, Void Callers in, and Void yeah. Callers without Malganis feels Awkward. really weak. Yeah. Like, at best, it's like, yeah, you got Imp Gang Boss for three mana. Sick. Or Doomgirt, it's like insane. But right. when you hit Malganis, when you're playing Imp Gang Bosses and Implosions, yeah, it's just mind blowing. Right. And right. Void Terror to activate it. Yeah. So you you activate it through uh, eating up the Void Caller, and then you implosion, and Malganus is on there. It's just like a crazy board. You can't deal with all those. It's like of a quartermaster for demons with additional right. bonuses. And you don't take any damage, That's so you true. can squeeze in a life tab. You know, yeah. that kind of stuff. <laughs> so uh, I, I think that the entire lineup will, or how they actually stack are going to be really big. We have Mage Hunter and Warlock for Raynad, and we have Druid Warlock and Paladin. Uh, that Druid deck, too, could be super important, but, you know, it's good against one class, good against Freeze Mage. It's weak against Zoo, and it's, like, okay against Hunter. So I'm looking at that as the X-Factor. Okay against Hunter? I wouldn't say so. You think uh, you think Hunter is the one that's favored there? Yeah, I think it's favored, especially against the version with Nourish. 
Oh, okay, fair enough. You're right, you're right, you're right. I was thinking much, about traditional druid. It very much depends on the druid's draws as well. Like, if you want to be good against face hunter, you need, like, innovates into, like, keepers straight off yeah, the bat and stuff like that. There's a lot of variables. That's the strategy against aggro decks, always. Yeah, it's a lot of, there's too many variables there for it to say that hunter fair enough. is not going to do well against druid. But, yep. yeah, I think uh, I think Reynard on, on paper has a very good chance because of his lineup. So if I was going to say someone, I would probably say Reynard at the moment. All right, so both of you are picking Raynad. Well, that means that's my time to pick Life Coach. I think Life Coach <laughs> is going to destroy Raynad. Not going to be even close. Uh, I think at the same time, you know, in a more serious note, I think Life Coach is playing spot on. Yeah, um, I agree. I think totally. he's really calm, collected. He's playing his game. Raynad seems to be easily tilted a little bit, you know? Sometimes the knife juggler didn't juggle onto Anoyer Tron. Three gets, times? Yeah, he got annoyed. You know, the fact double Doomguard came to the hand. The, you know, he saw his opponent play <laughs> the quartermaster <laughs> improperly sequence, and he still beat him. And, you know, those kinds yeah. of things, they, they tap into the mind a little you bit. You know what so happened? To, I think uh, Life Coach is a better mental yeah. state. It, when the quartermaster hits, uh, it, it w was played uh, before the hero right. power of the paladin, everyone in the, in the cinema, did you see Naked Weapon, the film? The, no, but what but happened? Everyone was like... Uh -oh. So he's pulling at the same time. <laughs> and it, it was even uh -oh. with a sound. So it was really, yeah. really funny. So me and Nimrich discussed I mean, that. We were all screaming in here like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I think he meant to play the heel bar. I don't think he was meant to play. Oh, pink. he just I played too fast. Yeah. I, think so? Yeah, because they were right, right next to each other. And he kind of did it. And he didn't think, oh, it wasn't like he thought, oh, I needed a hero power first. It was just like, oh, now I have to hero power. That's the kind of like vibe I got from, me and Nimrich kind of got from him. I think he meant to play the heel bar. Funny well, thing is, like, anyway. you can't even justify it. Sometimes it's funny. <laughs> Sometimes you like don't hero power, like you just play quartermaster. Maybe if it's like, oh, in Hunter, I don't want to give him another minion for him. But like, there's no way that he could have made that line and like been like, yeah, I meant to do that. You know, yeah. it's, it's that embarrassing moment. So, well, uh, I think uh, we've wrapped up most of our pregame analysis. Uh, two for Draenad, one for Life Coach, but we're gonna give it over to Admirable who's waiting in the casting desk along with Cal to see what they think. Thank you guys so much. I am joined here, of course, by Caldi. We're going to be bringing you this game. And uh, I think the guys at the desk pretty much nailed this matchup uh, when they said that this is really sort of a story of control versus aggro. Because that's what it feels like Raynad's lineup is. Even though he's got a Freeze Mage in there, that deck is really kind of akin to Miracle Rogue, where it wants to draw lots of cards, keep control of the board state, and then use a big combo at the end to burst you out. I think that's spot on here. Um, the Mage, I think, is a key class here for Raynad. If the Mage, uh, I suppose, gets a win, I think Raynad will take this. But, I mean, Life Coach ran a lot of heal, if we remember that. You know, a lot of heal bots, there was Lay on Hand, you know. So I, I, th I feel like. It would be hard to get a win with a mate, but if that does happen, I would give Reyna definitely the favor in this this one. Yeah, it looks to me just kind of uh, you know taking a look at the classes again. We you know we see what everything was. That Hunter looks like it's going to line up pretty well versus all three of Life Coach's classes. Yeah. That Mage is really going to line up well versus I I, I would say the non Druid classes. Druid seems to always be like one of the hardest decks for me whenever I'm playing Freeze Mage. And then Zoo is really interesting. I don't actually know how the new Zoo variants are going to line up versus something like Handlock, but against mm -hmm. Druid and Paladin, I mean, that's that's those are typically pretty good matches as well. So game one's going to get honor. underway. And, you know, like we said, Hunter pretty much has a good matchup versus all three of these decks, so really no surprises he can lead it here. I, I think so, definitely. I, I mean, the standard mid-range aggressive Paladin is unfa not favored against the, the face Hunter, but it's even worse with the... Uh, the control paladin. It's really going to be a struggle here. An excellent hand also for Reyna. It can't get much better than this, honestly. So um, bring him heavily favored in the game one. Yeah, I would tend to agree with you too. Life coach, it, it looks to me like he's really thinking about keeping this muster for battle. And I don't think I could blame anyone for keeping that card, but how important is it to, to be finding something like Zombie Chow or Shield and Minibot? I, I think I wouldn't keep the muster. I think you have to hire Mulligan here. I mean, it does, go, does get to the point. He has a lot of heals, so maybe he can stabilize. But what the turn one and turn two are the crucial ones against Hunter. If you let, let's say now that he uh, goes to the left binom into an Abjogler and then he pairs the Muster. I mean, Muster against that is horrible, you know. Uh, yeah, he could definitely spell some trouble. I, I I don't mind keeping the Muster here. I mean, he does want to have some sort of play going into it. Doesn't want to lose, you know, all of his options. Like imagine if he had Mulligan this and he just pulled three high drops. Mm -hmm. I think it's something that's weighing on his mind. Is he doesn't want to have zero <laughs> options going into that turn. This but is going to be absolute disaster now. If he goes for the Nightjuggler, we see the possibility of the Glaive Sukkah. It's just going to be devastating. Yeah. 
You know, he takes a lot of damage from this, but I actually don't think this is the worst case thing that could ever possibly happen to him. It's just, I mean, this is a lot of damage, though. Like, it he's going to muster for battle. He's going to take three more from Leopardo if he chooses to attack it with a weapon, and then two more from uh, the Death Rattle on it. He's had this pretty excellent, though. The Consecrate damage attack, the weapon is... It's yeah, it's looking okay, actually. Yeah, I think this is something that he was actually thinking about, because you saw him, he, you know, you could see him kind of talking to himself, and it, he was going through every single turn. This is something that just Life Coach does, is he always likes to play through all the different uh, ranges. I think this came into his mind at some point, because you also notice that he's been playing extremely fast in his first couple of turns. This is what it looks to me like a scenario that he almost had exactly planned out going into this point. Yeah, let's, let's go back to turn two if we think about that one. If he doesn't play the Glevsuka and, and rather just trades the Lapinom in to the Night Juggler and plays an own Night Juggler, that would have been excellent. But I think in hindsight, it's, it's you know, hard to say because obviously he doesn't know about the hand. So right. I, I think, yeah, I think it's, it's going to be pretty oh, decent. Wow. But now, do we see the Consecrate? What do you think? Well, I, I'm kind of looking at also the possibility of trading in your, your token here and then playing True Silver Champion. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of it's going to have to do with how he anticipates the rest of this game going. You know, if he... If he thinks that Reyna still got a very excellent hand in front of him, I would tend to say that True Silver Champion is going to be a little bit better. Yeah, um, you could like attack uh, an Arubian afterwards and yeah. uh, do a huge clear next turn. I actually like that, especially since you have two True Silver Champions. You really want to get those out ASAP. Yeah, having four charges of attack in your hand is really something that's difficult to deal with. And this this one three lights justice, that's not important. Ignore that yeah. part. <laughs> that, that damage is not going to be what ends up winning in the game. But being able not only to get eight extra life out of this, but also to get the damage utilization from True Silver Champion, I think is really important. I think the thing to note, though, that, okay, Life Coach is stabilizing, you know, he's clearing the board, but he isn't getting any damage to the face of Reynard, so I think that's actually going to be a crucial thing. Let's say, you know, like, Reynard coins out the uh, low tip after this, you know, he's still going to be piling on the damage, and, and a scenario in three or four turns when Life Coach is at 10 health, and then, you know, later in, there's still at 20. Like, it, it's a very realistic scenario now. Uh, I don't believe Zuka comes in. So it's not going to be Lothar this turn. He can, yeah, he can go Wolf Rider, oh. Glaive Suka, I suppose, but yeah. I like Lothar better. I think I think I like Lothar more, too. It's just, like, even if your opponent has True Silver Champion in this spot, they're still taking five damage from it. Yeah. I mean, imagine now if he plays, like, a Slot Belcher, he would just have a complete counter. Oh, damage. my gosh. That's that is card, a though, huge yeah. draw right now. Definitely the card you want there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, is there a better card you could have drawn than that? Um, Don't think so, no. Yeah, I don't think so, actually. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Now, it is, this is sort of interesting, though, because mm. if he chooses to, to Aldor Peacekeeper this, there is still a possibility that Reyna could Iron Beak Owl that mm -hmm. Lothab and start attacking five again. Yeah, but then I guess he can't Iron Beak Owl the, uh, the taunt that's coming up later, hopefully, for Life Coach. Yeah. So I think, yeah, it's Aldor here, power here, and go face. Let me think. Okay, somewhere that's supposed to hitting the uh, Lothab with a weapon. And you can clear next turn. Wow, that's so... I mean, that's a lot of life to pay. Drop, you know, he drops down to 17, and, and reina has got three cards left in his hand. This, heck, this isn't too terribly bad. But now what does he use the Peacekeeper for? That, this is really where... Yeah, like, is he going to Peacekeeper a, 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 a Arcane Golem or something? I, I yeah, you know, sort of similar to last turn, though. Um, or, I'm sorry, the turn before this one for Life Coach. He does have two True Silver Champions in his hand. He's got to start getting the charge is out before the game is just over. Mm -hmm. So it is important that he gets the True Silver Champion now so he can start utilizing it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but looking at the hand, he did draw the Owl, so it would have been really unfavorable. Yeah. But he can actually, I guess, Owl the Wolf Rider if it's not cleared. Yeah, I would, t I would tend to think that this uh, Wolf Rider is going to get attacked here. Depends, though. Uh, yeah, I don't know. You, I, that, you know, you do need the four damage, though. You just have tr 12 damage with the True Silver Champions. Yeah. yeah, actually, I think face is better. Yeah. You don't have to really have the option to play around the Owl, I suppose. Uh, oh, wow. I think you silence and go face. There's no option here. Yeah. Three, four. I mean, that's seven points of damage this turn. Mm -hmm. And then you have five with the, with the kill command and the hero power. Also put out the explosive trap. It's, yeah. It's a hard one, though. And you while you, then the owl basically becomes a glorified lepernome, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'll take that right now. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just free damage. Needs every point he can get. I mean, let's look at this scenario. Like he probably would have played, you know, if he had the option to play Belcher, 
or uh, alt or and uh, the mind control attack. You'd rather play the Belcher, I suppose. So yeah. that maybe gives him some idea that he doesn't have the Belcher, which is which bot on if that's the case. Yeah, when I think that's the read he's making, this is just going to be more face damage. And life coach, I mean, this is dire straits now. I don't know exactly how he gets out of this one, but it's seven mana. That one's not looking too good. Not really, no. The, um, the other problem here is that the true, this first attack of True Silver is actually not even going to generate anything because the Explosive Trap is going to negate the two points of healing. Mm -hmm. There is actually some players that play the, mm. uh, I guess, the Hybrid Hunter, which plays Shredders, Lothab, Dr. Boom, and then you play free, two Freezing Traps. I actually played that recently in the Pro League, and it's it's interesting. And now he's seen the low step, so I think there's a tiny bit of chance that this could be a freezing trap for for life course perspective. Not likely though. <laughs> Not even gonna go with the true silver champion. Just gonna drop piloted sky golem here, and that is going to be just enough damage for Reyna to end this one. So taking a pretty quick game one here, turn seven. Yeah. And uh, I don't even think that top deck was really that. I mean, if you think about the number of draws he had in his deck that would have ended the game this turn, it is so many. Any charge minion would have done it. You know, a beast would have done it with the kill command and the hero power. Just, I mean, what card in his deck doesn't end the game? That turn is really That's absolutely true, at. yeah. It's, it's going to be pretty rough there. Um, now, as expected, this game went went uh, to Reynard. I think still the mage will be the one that's uh, going to be the upset here. If, if Reynard can actually win a game with that or... or uh, I mean, life goes technically three of that, I suppose. Yeah, it's definitely possible. Um, I, I initially thought that Handlock versus Freeze Mage was really in favor of Freeze Mage. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of that game seems to come down to Lotheb timing from the Warlock. If they can nail a really strong Lotheb on you, you are in you're in pretty bad shape. The thing is also, a turn for Mountain Giant often ends the game just for the uh, Antlock, just wins the game outright, you know. Because either you're going to have to spend freeze it or spend spells and just like pressure from turn four non-stop is just too much often for the mage to yeah. deal with. Twilight Drake is usually something that's deal withable, but mm -hmm. Mountain Giant just, it is a bit much. Yeah, you can take two turns from the mountain, uh, the Twilight Drake there, but you can't really take turns from the Mountain Giant. One may be, but they're still really iffy, you know? Yeah, so Warlock, Druid, and Paladin still left for Life Coach, and Mage, of course, and Warlock left for Raynad here. And I think you would go for the Warlock in this case. It's stronger versus the the lineup because you want to you know you don't want to be accidentally losing a game you know uh, I, I, I suppose with mates that you could have beaten easily with warlock yeah the only thing i'm kind of looking at here is if we think that paladin and druid are the are the, the two decks that have the best matchup versus mage here mm -hmm. this may be a good time to try to get your warlock win in because i think that yeah. handlock is probably the matchup he wants to avoid yeah. with his um with his warlock now that being said, we said it was Zoo, but he's he's playing like Sylvanas and he's got Doctor Boom in there mm -hmm. as well. So it's not like a very very typical standard Zoo deck that you would have seen back in the day with Leper Gnomes and trying to kill your opponent as, as quickly as you possibly can. So that matchup necessarily isn't necessarily terrible for him. I mean, Sylvanas against Handlock can do some work. Definitely, yeah. but I, I think on the other side, it's not as fast. So against Druid and Paladin, it wouldn't be as strong. And I think to notice that. I don't know if anyone saw this earlier, but uh, Life Coach is running a mind control attack in both the Paladin and the Druid, so he had to play it on those. Yeah, that's also something to be noted. That actually may be sort of one of the edges he needs yeah. to actually win this game. It could end, end the game almost. I mean, yeah. Druid really struggles against aggressive Warlock decks. It's like the number one thing that they've struggled with mm -hmm. uh, since those decks came around. You know, ages ago when Hearthstone was you know in the beginning of its inception, Claw was found in so many Druid decks, and that was actually what yeah, gave them an it, edge. Yeah. yeah, and it gave them an edge to be able to beat some of these aggressive decks that were coming out, but now, I mean, all that stuff's been trimmed, and two Rass, and basically Keeper of the Grove is your removal suite. So he's going to go with Warlock here, and Life Crush is going to queue up Druid, and just as you mentioned, my control deck, and that's going to be Captain the Opening Hand. No surprise there. A huge Wild Growth, though. Yeah, this is a really great hand for Life Coach. Let's take a glimpse at Rain Adds, too. Oh, and that's a slow start. A note: The uh, Reynard has now played uh, three games. This is the third game here with uh, with the Warlock, and every single time he has not gotten the coin, and he's not gotten a one drop, and just passed it over. So maybe that's actually a, like the weakness of this deck. It does have like Doctor Boom and Sylvanas and goes really late game, but it doesn't seem to have enough one drops. I'd say. You know, that may not be the focus of his deck either. That's a possibility. Mm -hmm. But I mean, that's really hurt, I guess, by not having the coin. You know. Uh, what's going on? Is Reynard just not ended his turn yet? Is he... Hmm. 
Um, is this a mind game he's playing here? Hard to say. Time waits for no one. Oh, this end button turn. This end turn button is bugged right now. That's what it is. This is life coach's turn. It's mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't really know if I understand exactly. Could what's also be life coach contemplating whether he wants to go for the coin while cross. I think yeah. that's, a, that's a more likely scenario because he like really likes to think about those. That was what I didn't realize was that it was actually we're on life coach's turn. See, notice the way the button is now. Yeah, that's my bad. I think um, it's, right, I think it's right from him like, not to go for the wild cross. Because he wants the mind control attack for the late mid game. Yeah, I, I would tend to agree with you too. I mean, he, get, he basically gets a coin out of this. He doesn't want to play the mind control attack on three. He didn't have another three drop available on his hand. There's really no reason not to, to go ahead and save the coin here. But now this is this innervate though. This might actually change things. How important is it to get the pilot and shredder on board versus using wild growth and then of course saving this innervate now? Is the innervate worth more than the coin was? You know, kind of moving forward. I All think, these decisions kind of, they're very linear feeling applications. Yeah, I, I think you just hang on to the innovate, I suppose, for later. You could, you have the, you know, force of nature, which is decent. You also have maybe the option of going for something like a Sylvanas earlier or, or even a Nervous earlier, you know. So I, I definitely like hanging on to the, uh, the, uh, the innovate there. Second option would be, I guess, you know, Shredder Innovate Wrath something, if there's like a flame coming out. Oh, that's a good point. I actually like that one a lot. So Rand just kind of power overwhelming right now. Decides he needs this 4-4 four -four straight away to start dealing damage. I can't blame him this either. It's desperation, though. He needs to be farther ahead. As I mean, like we talked about earlier, Druid struggles if when the uh, aggressor gets one drop, two drop, and a three drop down. And now Rayna has missed turn three and missed turn one, so he's really struggling here. Yeah, I mean this. I mean his opening hand was such a poor draw. Nerubian Egg Implosion, Void Caller, Void Caller is not a very strong zoo start. Absolutely not. I guess, yeah, this is even closer to Demon Lock than Zoo, but it's, it's it's really all over the place. I wonder how Demon Wrath would work in this one. There's a lot of demons in this one. Yeah. yeah. Said, but I think you have to go for just Sweater, and that makes the Implosion really strong here. Yeah, I, I would think I would tend to be rolling with Implosion here. The Void the problem is when you don't get a three, this is actually kind of a big moment. Gets a four, though. Wow. There's Wild a, Pyromancer. There's like some merit that's about to go to the Void Color, because you could get a second Void Color from it and then maybe into a Doom Guard or something. But yeah. yeah there's no, no swipe yeah. here for Life Coach either. So this is. I mean, this is tough ground. I think you maybe start with the Wrath for one and try to draw into it. Yeah, I would say so. Could technically mind control attack, but you'd probably just get a 1 1. Even if he doesn't get a 1. I mean, a 4 1 is effectively a 1 1, I think, in this spot. It's just forcing a trade. Mm -hmm. I th yeah, I think start with the Wrath to 4 1, then either go, yeah, Belcher or. or yeah, probably just Belcher after that. Yeah, I, I think I like that too. Hmm. There's a lot of possibilities here, though. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can definitely see using Hero Power and saving the Wrath. It's more about the tempo, though. Like, it do take damage also. It becomes at a point, but this is not as aggressive, so damage to the face isn't as relevant, I suppose, in this match. Uh, like this, oh, no. he, might, he might feel like this is one of the spots where he can actually pay life. But when you're kind of looking down this much damage, I tend, I, I would tend to think that card draw is going to be an important oh, option. Wow, here. that's a huge Whoa, draw. Whoa, that is almost certainly going to be an Emperor Thorson instead. But I think another thing to think about that wrath is, uh, I mean, what? What other option are you going to use the Wrath for, you know? Yeah. The better option coming up Maybe. But it's possible, I suppose. Yeah, that's a... Uh, that's a pretty darn good Emperor. <laughs> On turn six, he's got Mind Control Tech and either Azure Drake or Sludge Belcher. I bet he's wishing he had that uh, power roaming now. Yeah, I think he did what he had to do, though. He, he, yeah, it's absolutely correct. You have to play on tempo. With Doom, no good, you know, just have, uh, like, endless cards. Yeah, but this yeah. is still strong for Reynard. It, it's definitely... I, I don't think this is looking terrible for Reynard at this point, but is but this is looking at, like, oh, my gosh. This I mean, it's getting to the, to the point where hero power is putting a lot of strain on the Warlock's ability to, to keep board control, mm -hmm. and he's going to start getting into his really big, strong minions turns. And this is where Druid wants to be. He wants to be at a comfortable life total while it's fighting for the board effectively. Yeah. I think the uh, combo is very likely to come down just for removal at some point. But I think Azure Drake is a call here into a hero power, maybe? 
Yeah, I don't I don't see playing the mind control deck this turn for sure. And I do like Azure Drake. Azure Drake actually contests the board position versus Sludge Belcher, which would leave that void color alive. <laughs> Not only that, but it's gonna help him get some options here too, and I think options are Wild Girl, very critical. Wow, that's it's a bad draw. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna be stuck in his hand for quite a while. Or does he just go for it next this turn and then play the combo next turn? <laughs> just twenty of them. You're down to eight, Raynad. <laughs> go. <laughs> that doesn't feel like a very life coach play to me. <laughs> Not at all, but I mean, I mean, you could use it like just to clear the entire board, I suppose. But this isn't like the best board for that, I suppose. So I think hero power is the correct call here. Yeah. And also, if you're wow, if life you, coach if, actually is going to go for wild growth here too. And this is something that consistently, every single time that I have to cast life coach, this is something that happens every single time. He always makes like some weird obscure play that you don't really understand exactly how important it was until about three turns after the fact. I mean, this is the benefit of all this thinking that he does. You think he's just sitting there and waiting for the ropes that way you'll want to pull your eyes out, but he's planning every single turn out in advance. I guess maybe he knows that uh, his deck is so full of value that it won't run dry at all. So he has no you know, worry of, I guess, getting to top deck mode and, and falling behind. So he figures, okay, like I, I, if I could just get one extra hero power in, it would be fine. I don't need to draw, you know, it's it's irrelevant. I'm going to draw the Kalthazar and, and the Ancient of War and those crazy big, big drops later on, so. I can definitely see that. He does have a Nourish in this deck, too. Mm -hmm. So a lot of card draw available still in his draws. I think to note that Reyna has actually never gone to four minions except the, that implosion turn, so uh, maybe he's actually thinking about the MC deck now. So I think it's definitely in his mind. Now he's got to make some sort of decision here. My shield for Argon. He could have, I guess, run the in and run the two-two and the two-one into that trick, and then he has only three minions to play around it. Yeah, and then he's sit he's sitting there with the egg then though, and that's really like an issue. I mean, you want your egg to be doing something. You don't want to just throw it, throw it away. It's such an important card. I think you go for now just the hero power on the four-one maybe. So and and then play the mind control deck. Yeah, that seems strong. Two, three, four, and then you have Sludge Belcher to follow it up. I actually kind of like that. Because I mean, if you go faster, you can't really get the swipe. So. Yeah, swipe isn't isn't too terribly strong here. I mean, he maybe doesn't know that there's another demon in hand. But Plus, he doesn't have the mana. How how clunky this this uh, suit turn has been with so many taps so far. I think, you know, or with the tap before or 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 no, nothing played, it feels likely that there'll be some some demon left. Like a void or something, but now what happens if you still like a one one or a two one though? Like is is that gonna be too bad? Like is there merit here to ever using combo and trying to clear out stuff? I don't feel like there is. Not really. I yeah, I think yeah, I would definitely hear about this void color. I'm trying to think of any other reasonable plays and I just I don't see them. Yeah, I think I think the thing is, you can draw into other portals, so you want to get the mana out if possible. Yeah, yeah steals a 2 1, so, I mean, this is a, it's a six, that's about a 60 40 right there. Mm -hmm. And while I don't think he loses the game on the 60 40, it, I mean, that's a definite, distinct advantage being shown if he yeah. takes one of the uh, the more powerful minions. I think Sylvanas is going to be brutal here. This is a really awkward board state with Sylvanas, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. I think to note, though, like, he is getting. A lot of damage if he combos with this many minions on the board. I wonder how he's going to clear this Belcher, or if he's going to clear the Belcher at all. Like, but I, I like the Sylvanas here, no matter what. Yeah, I actually, you know, the Sylvanas, the more I think about it too, you're losing a hero power when you do this, and you're starting to run out of cards, and you are going to need to keep up with Druid at some point in the game, so this Sylvanas may be better suited for like hanging on to until like a much more critical turn. With this draw from the hero power, this is way stronger if you get the power oh, of yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, this is this is sort of like a miracle draw. I was <laughs> I didn't want to bring too much attention to how important this was. But like, I mean, even if you just drew something like a void caller here, um, I'm sorry, a void walker, a void walker would have made this turn like the knife juggler, haunted creeper, void stronger. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I still even still think that's stronger because I mean, on turn eight, then he's getting another hero power and the Sylvanas after that. It depends, like. Let's say that, you know, life coach's hand now was like, you know, uh, Kaldasar and Nation of the War or something, you know? Like it would 
just shut down that so hard, I suppose. Just, we have oh to figure that out. Oh, wow, he nailed the juggle onto the abusive sergeant, too. We have to figure that, you know, since if there was an early minion in Lacos's hand, he would have probably played it instead of the uh, wild growth earlier, because he's had so much mana to spend, and he's been hero powering so often. So I guess you could make the argument from that that he didn't have a lot of, uh, I guess, small minions left, so he'd have to play stuff, uh, big stuff. Yeah. We want to put to the Slimanos. Wow, this is tough. I mean, he really wants to keep for the knife juggler, but he really wants to silence the Nerubian egg. And I think silence the Nerubian egg is definitely better here. But is there an even better option outside of that? Maybe this combo. So let's, I mean, let's just say he used Force Nature Savage Orb. Mm -hmm. You can clear now the Void, uh, void Collar, I can clear the uh, Nerubian, and you can clear the Knife juggler. Or you could possibly just clear the Defender of Arcus and then uh, hear a kill with the that, with the face. You I know, suppose. he's clearing out a lot of stuff that way, but now he's back on the, on the point where he's drawing one card turn as opposed to drawing two. I think he needs to look for a way to get just an... Oh my gosh. Think about, think about the scenario, though. Like, if, if he would have gone for the clear oh, no. uh, with the uh, combo, the only mini left is a, uh, a two, uh, one Nerubian. Uh, Hunter Creeper, I suppose, yeah. And, and then it's just one card and a hero power. All that, but that stripe is massive. He has to hurry. I actually oh, still yeah. like the silence, and I like a... Uh... It's going to be good no matter what, I suppose, yeah. at some point, but... I mean, let's think if, if there's a Doom Guard now. Like, it gets so threatening, I suppose. Uh... These turns are getting so difficult. They really, really are. This first no juggle is so important. Oh, well, I think that's the place he wanted that to go for sure. Absolutely, here. I mean, technically, he does need to play around combo at this point with how this is looking, but... Yeah, I mean, if he didn't deal with either of these minions here, which, you know, is a pretty... That's, just that thought is kind of beyond me at this point. But if he didn't deal with either of them, he's looking at 24 points damage coming across the board. So many possibilities. So not a situation you really want to be in. I mean, going for face is really crucial uh, with this stage of the game. Uh, because, I mean, if there's no taunt, you can just literally win. But I think you do need to trade a bit here. Yeah, I agree. So I'm going to see where one more juggle lands before he just <laughs> makes his full decision. Uh, that's an okay one. You can tell he's really stressed, though. He doesn't want to overkill either of these minions. That's, like, the, the situation he's really trying to avoid. I think he just, like, pops the uh, Haunted Creeper into the Astro deck and just see where that goes. We need to hurry up with it because of the animation. Yeah, this is getting close. So many. Wow. Uh, so that's going to be face instead, both of those. I'm really surprised by that. You know, it does, he's trying to play around swipe when he does this, actually. This is really smart. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't want to get swiped in a position like this. I, I suppose, but he can clip both minions his way, you know. So it's... I think it would be about the same number. But this yeah, might actually be a, a swipe turn from Life Coach, too. But then, how does how does he divide this up though? He could technically savage roar and uh, he attack the hero to one of the one of the guys. But it, it's tribe isn't actually really good there here. Like the, uh, this is really rough. If he deals 18 damage, he's got swipe and savage roar the next turn, mm -hmm. which is. But let's assume this keep of the grove got killed. That'd be seven damage afterwards. So 18 plus seven, that's 25. That's one damage off lethal, right? He could also just wait a minute. Wait a minute. Force of nature. If he, five. yeah, force nature costs five mana right now, so he gets a hero power along with it. So if he actually casts force nature and savage roar, and then hero powers, that's fifteen. That's nineteen damage. That'll leave Rainer at seven, and then the next turn he has savage roar and swipe with the hero power. Mm -hmm. I think that's what he's going for now. I mean, there's not a lot of, I suppose. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's five, six, seven. Rainer's got nine damage. Rainer needs to to draw something like Doom Guard. Or, or a power overwhelming or a yeah. taunt to win this game. Mm -hmm. There's also a possibility for like abusive sergeant and uh, dive move or something. I'm not sure they weren't a dive move, but this, yeah, this is I think the best move for sure. And away, whoa! Oh, that's really important. I think this actually just seals the game right there. Wow. So he's got four damage to face. I'd put him at ten. Void. Do, uh, do you life tap here? I mean, you can't play on two swipes anyway, so why not? Uh, it's my thinking. Does he play around swipe and keeper though? That's true. 
Gosh, this is so tough. I, I agree with the, I think I agree with the life tap here. Mm -hmm. Put this apple on your head. I mean, we would have thought, you know, like a double keeper would have probably come down before us. Oh. Wow. That's a crucial juggle to it. It actually buys him a lot of damage with the Sylvanas on the face. It does, yeah. Life really. Coach is now on the back foot. He needs the top deck to win this one. <laughs> he can't split the damage up. He's got way enough damage to actually do what he wants to do, but he can't split it up the right way. Mm -hmm. I think I think that's game. It looks to be, yeah. What? One off. Is yeah, there any combination even, even of this turn. Even if he swipes the uh, the knife juggler here, he's still taking five, six, seven, eight. He's taking eight on the backswing. Okay, what about Ancient of Lore into Innovate Thalnos? Swipe. That's not even enough what? mana. Yeah. Wait, that is. No, no, it's, no, yeah, it's he's, the fire, he's off. Yeah. That's really uh, ambitious, though. I like. That. Hmm. I like that you're thinking that deep. What if he just? What if he just Ancient of Lore's and he draws Moonfire and, and Innervate? Mm -hmm. Bam. Yeah. Easy game. Is there any, any possibility he could survive, you know? If he heals for five, and then he hero powers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, he's still not enough. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's just it. Time waits for no one. Looks to be a... Life coach is taking his head. Yeah. Here. He, can't find a, he can't find a way out of it. That's what he's... Mm -hmm. I mean, heal doesn't work, you know. Uh, removal doesn't work, so... He's gonna just hope that Rainad doesn't see something, I guess. Actually, stays alive with one. Wait, no, he doesn't. No. He's gonna take one damage to do it. Yeah, that's gonna do it. Rainad's gonna take game number uh, two. Game yeah. number two here, take a 2 0 lead. And, you know, this is actually. I'm not too terribly surprised to be seeing this happening because something that I've seen over and over again is players try to fight value battles with Life Coach, and it very, very rarely works. He's so that's like where his he excels at his game is when he gets in these scenarios where he's able to make long-term trades with what's going on. You know, able to utilize lots of hero powers and really looking to utilize his mana in certain ways. And when you get in that game with Life Coach, I feel like that's where players are often falling behind. The way to make him uncomfortable isn't unfamiliar situations. The way to make him uncomfortable is with almost reckless aggression. Mm -hmm. I mean, he isn't the god, so like, he, if, if he doesn't get anything on turn one or two, two or two, three, he just dies to a hunter like everyone else, I suppose. So, yeah. That appears to be the way to go against him, yeah. Now, we were talking about the mage being the weak point in this, and, and the mage is up for Reynard, so he does get three chances, though, to win the game. And I think, <laughs> you know, looking at these decks, Reynard is. Lineup is heavily favored, but the maze will be the one to look out for now. Yeah, I mean, you know, like you said, this is sort of the weak spot in his lineup, I would think, in that he does have to get through a druid, which druid has nurse in there too, so it's able to dig for a lot of these key cards it needs mm -hmm. with the, for, for its, you know, the loath that when he needs it for these ancient lures to make sure he can, he can stay healed and keep the pressure up. Uh, the paladin sort of in the same vein. The healing in there could be a really big key to being able to beat that deck. And then handlock. You know, if he gets an early mountain giant, that's usually enough pressure to kind of keep mage on the back foot. Also, uh, two healbots in the in the handlock, so that's going to be huge. Yeah. Sixteen more points of health with that. The difference with that though is that if this was one game, life coach had to win with one of these three decks versus mage, I definitely would would consider him. You know, very very close to maybe even a favorite. Yeah, yeah. If that was the case, but he's mm -hmm. got to win three games. It's going to be pretty mage. insane. I, I think if we look at it, I think the paladin probably has the best chance of losing, I'd say, because uh, the Doomsayers can be so crucial here. And we see the best matchup coming up, up first, which would be the uh, Druid here. A Wild Growth, a Keeper, and a Swipe. Now, Keeper is crucial to f uh, unfreeze the minions for Dark Diamonds in the late game, or to silence the Doomsayers, but you don't want to be playing them on curve at all. So I think you might even just keep the Wild Growth and nothing more. Yeah, I would tend to agree with you as well. It's just important to get strong, aggressive minions. I haven't seen a Shade I don't think from Life Coach's deck. Is he running that? Have you seen that at all yet? I don't think so, no. He learns Mind Control deck, I, I know, uh, and two big games, I believe. Well, he picked up a Piloted Shredder to go along with that Keeper of the Grove, so now that Keep looks a lot better. Mm. I guess with a Wild Growth in hand, keeping a, you know, having the, the Keeper stay in the hand it isn't like too terribly surprising, because he really just needs any minion to start getting the pressure rolling. Like, even if it isn't, isn't until um, effective turn five okay. for him, um, until he gets something like Druid of the Claw active, this, the Keeper is still something you're going to want in your hand. 
and he goes for that PM uh, well played in the beginning. It's but now looking at the keeper, you definitely don't want to be playing that now. It is crucial to kill those doomsayers, and it's maybe good to have this on the start as it's an excellent card. But it's not something you want to play on on curve, and you need to have a fast curve against freeze mage. If you're gonna stand a chance. Yeah, keeping this keeper in your hand here is so very crucial. Mm -hmm. Being able to take out Doomsayers is, I mean, that's one of the most common ways that I either win as the Druid or lose as the Mage, yeah. is when my Doomsayers don't get utilized. I'd say now, um, this would be the perfect hand against Aggro that uh, Reynard has. If you could go for the uh, Mad Scientist into the draw, into the coin uh, Doomsayer Frost Nova, that'd be about the a killer of mechmates or Sue, you know, or something like that, I <laughs> yeah. suppose. But facing through it is a bit different, uh, as there's not a lot of one, two, or three drops, so you can just AOE down and turn uh, four there with a coin. So yeah, having to deal with efficient mid range means the entire way, certainly. Mm -hmm. uh, makes some of your spells a little bit worse. Your burn spells become a lot better, but you need they your do, burn spells yeah. to actually kill them. Second Frost Nova, not really what you want to see, but he's. I suppose he's going to look at the big picture and just uh, see what he gets from that Arcane Inlet. Do you trade in the scientists here to thin out a secret first? I don't think so, no. Okay. How, how important is the deck thing? I feel like the deck thing is actually really important here. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, b before he got into this turn, it was one, two, three, four, five, six, 20, it was 24. Mm -hmm. So it was four to 24, and then it, it went from four to 24 to three to 21. Mm -hmm. Or 21 to, th I'm sorry, the other way around. 24 to four versus 23 to three. I mean, the thing is, it's, it's, it's low jumps, and uh, you're actually taking four extra damage, you know, because at some point he would have to kill the Mad Scientist. So then he can't be going face. So he. Uh, Does he have to kill the Mad Scientist, though? I feel like that Life Coach should just ignore it and just continue to go face. Better with Blizzard, etc. Yeah. But yeah, um, we do have an update from the challenge stage now. Teng eliminates Bunny Murphy. Wow. I'd say even an upset now, so Korea still has a chance to face against uh, Life Coach or Reynard. Yeah, I actually, Bunny Muffin, the series he played versus Life Coach, I thought he played, he was he was pretty yeah. pretty on point in that series, and uh, Tang, you know, a, cup, a few questionable plays versus Reynard in his last match, you know, maybe it was just the nerves that were getting to him. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, and the challenger stage really collected himself, so, you know, I, I would agree with you, I tend to say a minor upset, but mm -hmm. an upset nonetheless. What do you think about this, uh, don't say here? I think this is pretty reasonable, actually. You know, he's looking just to buy back tempos so that way he can coin out this Emperor Thorazon, which is like one of the best plays you can have post Doomsayer. Mm -hmm. And I think it's actually what make has made Freeze Mage go from a deck that, you know, at certain times can be very powerful to being one of the best decks I think that you can play. Um, now we've seen Dog play a very interesting type of Freeze Mage with Maliko. I tend to really uh, like that that type of uh, Freeze Mage. What do you think about that one? The Malagos versions. Yeah, I I, I, can, I can see Malagos being better in sort of control-heavy meta games, mm -hmm. but in any meta game in which you're going to be expecting more aggressive decks to be coming out of you, I I think the Malagos is just a wasted slot mm -hmm. against those decks, and it'd probably be better served to something like um, an explosive sheep or even anti kill bot. Yeah, it's definitely interesting with Thorazan when you can go for like four spells. Oh yeah, for that first after <laughs> Strasa, but it's yeah, it's true. Um, now looking at the uh, Thorazan, it's gonna. He can pretty good. I think he would have wished that he could have played Dark and Intellect before, you know? But obviously, you go for the turn six, the coin, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty tough to not play Emperor with a hand like this. But he can, he can technically go Acolyte, Ping, and Arcan Intellect next turn, you know? Yeah, plus seven mana mm -hmm. is no joke from Emperor. Plus, this Emperor is also going to draw some heat here from Life Coach. I mean, Life Coach almost certainly has an eye on killing that Emperor. So not only is he getting seven mana out of this, but he's also buying extra damage from this. And he's, he's getting card advantage, too, because he's going to have to use more than one thing to kill the Emperor. It's just, everything's going right for, for Reyna this game. It's perfect, yeah. And and the armor actually becomes quite powerful with Druid, but let's... We've compared, you know, like 15 health versus 16 health for Druid. It's a night and day, because if 15 health dies to Fireball, Fireball, Frostbolt, yeah. whereas, you know, uh, 16 health doesn't. But then maybe an extra turn to pop an Ice Block or something, which can be quite crucial here. Yeah. Blue Horn getting drawn. Uh, this is, I mean, this is looking to me like he's going to want to draw some cards. So Acolyte, mm -hmm. not a surprise to see. Blue Horn, not a surprise to, to see. And then, of course, Frost Nova. And I like that he's playing the minions before using the Arcane Intellect because there's not really any draw in his deck that's going to change the way that his hand's going to pan out. But 
having these minions on the board now and then being able to draw with the Arcane Intellect for only two mana going, like, say, turn seven, turn eight, is such a big difference. I think a big thing is he's already seen the swipe, so this would be weak to swipe, I suppose, this and, uh, and another thing, he probably wants to go for the Bridget next turn, and now he can actually kill the Azure Drake with the Lepernome, uh, the Luthorus, without it, so it's uh, looking good for him. Now, here's the Thorazon, though, to follow it up. What do you think about Thorazon and Wrathing the Akhla Pain? I don't know if I, I don't know if I prefer Wrathing the Acolyte of Pain. Um, I think I would actually tend to draw a card if the Wrath was going to use it, or just Hero Power. Um, what would you want to draw into though? I mean, the only card I would want in this hand would be a Lothal, I suppose. Yeah, I think it's I, that's. I mean, that's certainly be a concern to me. I think I would tend to just value the Hero Power though. The armor is just worth so much. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking because like, let's say that he get, does lose the Acolyte of Pain here. Doesn't have like doesn't have like I doesn't have you know flame strike to clear here, so it's, it becomes a bit more painful. He does have the blizzard though? I mean, those blizzards are gonna buy him a lot of time. Definitely, he can survive until turn ten, but just what happens at turn ten? Can he actually kill him at that point? You yeah, know? he's gonna need to draw some, some of the right cards. <laughs> Let's go with the draw here. Yeah, it's gonna be a for no chance. Absolutely. Um, no, a math scientist, not what he wants to see. Anymore. So the real question here is which one's better, regular Emperor Thorson or Golden Emperor Thorson? Oh, it's it's really a cool minion. I'd say like the gold effect, especially. There's a lot going on in the portrait. <laughs> uh, Can you imagine it? if Wild Growth was actually just one mana? <laughs> Everyone's life would just be ruined. I'd quit. <laughs> Now we have an ice block and a fire block. It doesn't do much good, but he really is looking for that flame strike damage. Yeah, pretty feels pretty darn committed to go ahead and kill this emperor. It's one of those ice lands he's got, but this is some pretty good board development. And again, he's got the second blizzard to follow this up, so really feeling like he's not under a lot of pressure. There is Shade of Nexramus. Apparently, yeah, but he hasn't been drawing it at all in the games we've seen so far. Yeah, I would venture to say it means there's probably one copy of that in there. He's probably got yeah. one mind control deck and one Shade of Nexramus. That, that's probably right, yeah. And I, I like Reynard's play of play minions over spells here into this, yeah. as, as he doesn't have the flame strike here. Minions first is typically, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's a good, it's a valuable lesson to learn in Hearthstone, just for pretty much anyone who's out there playing. And then as you continue to play minions first, always you learn when playing spells are a better option for you. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, the, uh, the minion plus spell combo is probably the strongest, you know, compared to like minion minion or or, yeah. uh, or spell spell, you know. I mean, with spells you can't really go get ahead. It just kind of even out. But um, looking at this turn here, you can play animal companion to get a minion and a spell. Actually, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go fell spirit. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I suppose I don't really like the shade. Something you he may. For no one. I think Belcher's is really a, a no-brainer, but you just Belcher and Hero Power. Gosh, I I think I don't know. I don't think playing the Shades is really terrible. I don't mind him roping it at all, actually. I mean, I think I would tend to play the Shade just because it's just it's almost free. You know, like, I, you, I mean, you're using all your mana. You don't want to use the Ancient Lore. You want to have that as backup. It's sort of like a you know a desperation point almost. <laughs> Yeah, so I guess when if, if not there, then when I, I suppose when yeah. you play it. But this also does like really commit Raynad to using a Blizzard this turn if he has one, um, which you know isn't the worst thing in the world. It's probably something he would have done anyway. But making sure that he's committed to that game plan instead of l allowing him options could be something that's in life coach's mind. Because how important? How is how important? How vital is Shade going to be to winning this game? Not very. Yeah. yeah. You want it on turn three, I suppose, but then it becomes, is there going to be a Doomsday that's going to mess him up? When do you attack face with it, you know? Yeah. Probably early. I, I like to attack when I'm playing his Peachman. like, have a 4-4 four, four attack face, you know? I don't really usually wait a lot with the shade, but the bitch is going to be devastating, and he has the option of uh, Antonidas and Frost over next turn. I think the big thing to consider now is it, it's going to be, what it, what is the 33 health, you know? Yeah, I mean, that's a tough to choose through. He's just gonna have to draw cards here. He doesn't really have. I mean, he's he's like again. He's just kind of run out of gas at this point. Mm. The second edge lore is really crucial because it really plays around the Alexstrasza here. I have to say, yeah, Antonidas and Rosnow seems like a no-brainer at this point. Yeah, I would tend to agree with you. He can actually just start, you know, fireballing face. I'd say. Yeah. yeah, I think you're gonna see combo here from Life Coach. Um, he's not. I don't think he's going to be too terribly happy about it. Wow, there's actually two shades huh. of Extramus in here too. I'll be damned. That was really weird. That didn't yeah, he, come has, out he hasn't drawn him like at all. Yeah, this is the about, first game. 
two, three games at least. Uh, but if we think about it, is there a Lothab in the deck? There's gotta be Lothab. Mm -hmm. There's I'm, gotta be Lothab. I mean, he's gotta cut, you know, something for Nourish, like, at the point. But now the three fireballs here, the heal's gonna be crucial, absolutely. Yeah. I, think he, I think he really needs a combo here. He's also run out of freeze, so at this point, the combo is gonna come down sooner or later, and he will need to have, you know, he does have a lot of turns to, to get the fireballs out eventually. So I think I like Reyna's position in this game. I'm trying to see another alternative. <laughs> I just cannot imagine not killing our great gentleman tonight, sister. Mm -hmm. Time waits for no one. Yeah, it's true. I guess something he might be thinking about is, is it worth it to like hero power and, and tank some extra damage? Yeah, I don't think it is. I think like Alexstrasza draw will be just crucial here. If it, if it has maybe two turns to draw it. Yeah. And then there's not much of a answer from life coach there, but uh, flame strike also will be delicious here. So many good draws. That is not one of them though. Well, you know, I say that it's not good yet. He does have an arcane intellect here. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't have any free sets about Maybe it's one cone of cold is a possibility, but it's unlikely, I'd say. Uh, and I like the positioning, by the way. He's making sure that you can't both, you know, freeze the Shade and the 5-5 uh, five five there. Those are not spectacular draws. Not at all. I guess you just throw out both the Thalos and the Loot Order. Do or you even throw out Thalos? Fireball, I mean, Fireball, the Lore, even. I don't even think it's unreasonable to play Doomsayer as just use as sort of like a gain life spell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just buy extra time. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're drawing cards. Maybe you do play Loot Herder here. I mean, you are sort of hard pressed. Yeah. I'm since sorry. I'm sorry. The Blood Mage. Yeah, I mean, since you're out of uh, my brain had turned it into Loot Herder. <laughs> but since you're out of you know uh, freeze, I guess it's a good call here. Uh, the Keeper would have been better earlier, I'd say. I think Valgroth is going to come down no matter what, at least in this case. Yeah, it's looking, it's looking like it. But Reyna is running out of steam. He needs Alex Trasha from those three draws that he'll get next turn. Maybe there's even, like, if, if Life Coach knew what Reyna had in his hand, I mean, he could kind of, I guess, think about the possibility of him having having nothing in his hand of value as he went for a Doomsayer, you know. He knows that one of them is a fireball. Mm -hmm. what? Yeah, that's, that's true. But I mean, if, if, he, if he realizes that it, Reyna has a horrible hand and is thinking for something, Maybe even silencing the, you know, Thalos would be okay. Limit him to only one draw there for that. The big game hunter doesn't do much. May need to play it though. I think you want a hero power though every turn from now. I still think I think he's gonna end up silencing this Doomsayer and kind of turning this. Ah, he's just gonna silence the Thalos. I was gonna think maybe he was gonna silence his Doomsayer and just buy seven extra points or buy you know five points of damage from the battle cry. I way. think he may be thinking like, do I want the whole extra turn? You know, because he's gonna be only thinking about the draw and, and drawing his turn. Yeah. Or, or do I want you know to uh, get the extra seven damage? I think he's going for the turn here. Wow, he draws Frostbolt. This is. I did nothing for this him. This is getting really close to heartbreak. He needs Alex draws, I think, right now. Gets a second Frostbolt. Is there any merit to just? Does he need to it's become like, so desperate? Twenty-five. It's only 25 damage to the face right now. So, you know, something something I talked about with a couple players, actually, they were playing, like, anti-zoo versions of uh, of Freeze Mage, and they had actually cut Pyroblast from the list. Yeah. I mean, you, I think now it's either Malikos or Pyroblast. At yeah. Point. Looking at it, like, do you have to... I think you force bolt the Pyroblast is better, probably. <laughs> you just rip it. You're like, yeah. you know what? I do win this game. How many is it? 63, 67 minions? How many different two loss minions are there? I think it's like over, over 20. Yeah. He's got a fireball ancient lore here, so just trying to buy some extra time to find Alex Straza. Not a lot of cards left in Rain Out's deck either. It looks like to me like it's five cards left, four cards left. At all, and he must also think, you know, now Lycos has drawn a lot, so yeah. he's not unlikely to have the lore or, or even you know, the load depth, so he need, may need a lot of damage now. Five cards and seven cards right now. What if we just like? I guess you don't want to fill up the board. That's one thing. So there's no possibility of heal with a lore. But 
I mean, if he plays Alex Trance, I suppose you could just run all the minis into it and clear a space on the board like that. Yeah. Not utilizing Big Game Hunter in a spot like that, though, is... Mm -hmm. That sucks. What inexperienced duels often mm. do against... Uh, in the early stages of... Uh, of uh, this matchup is they fill up the board, and then when the Frost Nova uh, Doomsday comes down, they can't drop the Keeper because there's no space oh, for it. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, that actually happened to me in one of my very first Druid games I'd ever oh. played against Freeze Mage. That happened. Oh, I got Frost Nova Doomsayer, and I was like, ah, I can keep her. And I was like, I can't keep her. I don't have any room on the board. When, wow, uh, Life Coach is going to favor card drawing here. Oh, my oh. gosh. That is going to pop the Ice Block this turn. Good to see, see this whole thing. Does he have the time to idea. optimally split this damage, though? Yep, he certainly he found it right away, too. Did he get the hero power off, though? That's interesting. I wonder. Yeah, he's going to iterate just to hero power. But yeah, on, on the topic of um, early freeze mage, with that one, uh, Alex Traza coin Frost Nova was possible. Yeah, it's actually really important. That he, wow, Ice Lance gets drawn. Still no help. Raynad, I actually don't know if he can close this game now. 12, 18, that's only 22 damage. That's not even close. I think this is actually over now, yeah. There's, there's no way. He needed Alex Straza. He needs a Doomsayer, <laughs> literally. But he can still just hero power down, so it's, yeah, this is. Okay, Frostbolt, Pilot Shredder, get a Doomsayer. Mm -hmm. Play Ice Block. Frostbolt, Ice Lance your opponent. <laughs> it's, it's possible, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's there 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 yeah. could be a slime though from the belt charge, supposed to think about it. Oh, that, he yeah. could just ice lance him too, instead, oh, of, yeah. instead of spending the other frostbolt. Mm -hmm. And that would give him a hero power. And then he can draw Alex Straza. Mm -hmm. And then his opponent will pop the ice block. And there'll be no, no Dr. Boom played yeah, or Lothar that he's played, missing yeah. one damage at the end. Mm -hmm. That's brutal. Hmm. But yeah, I think Reynard is realizing this, yeah. Um, yeah, sort of uh, coming to the conclusion that he's going to have to get. How awesome would it be if he goes for it and gets a Lomoko Cho out of it? Had insult to injure in this <laughs> case. Uh. Yeah, he's got a Frostbolt. It looks to me like it's Pilot Shredder. Yep. He's got to get Doomsayer. Oh, River Acrocolisk. That's actually the second one, right? Yeah. I think it's the second one yep. in a really short time. So, now what, what can he draw? I don't think there's a single card in the deck that he can draw. Flamestrike would keep him alive for one turn. Yeah, I don't think he's going to keep him alive for this turn. So, Life Coach going to put a point on the board here now. Two to one for Raynad still, though. And two matches. Again, you know, we talked about how Life Coach would probably be able to win one of these games. Um, and if he had to only win one game, he would have been considered a favorite. But he's got to win three games versus Freeze Mage. And I would venture to say that Alex Straza is not going to be hiding in the bottom three cards of the deck mm -hmm. three games in a row. That's just oh. so, so unlikely. Or the Flame Tech, I suppose, which was... Yeah. I think it's really crucial as well. But now the easy one is out of the way, which turned out to be not easy at all. You know, I mean, I think if, if the draws had gone normally there in the end, it would have been easily in range of heavy if he got the Alice Trasa. But now the Paladin and the Warlock left. I think the Warlock would be the one to pick next, I suppose, but it depends. Yeah, I would tend to, I would tend to go with the Warlock here too. Uh, you know, Paladin and Warlock is what he's got left. Mm -hmm. And um, he's kind of moving with one with both of them. So I don't really think it matters too much which one he queues up here, uh, unless he's trying to fish for some more information and he feels like the information is more beneficial to one of his decks than the other one. Um, but just for you know the sake of momentum, I think I would try to queue up the Warlock here. I think Paladin's going to have a fantastic job versus it, and that Warlock, you know, you don't really want to be going into game five with that mindset of like, oh, well, this isn't the best matchup I could have had. The summer that's supposed to go in Paladin, you know, the, the arguably the worst matchup, uh, as, as it does, you know, it doesn't show you as many cards. If you go three games, you show extra cards as opposed to the yeah. possible play there against Tang later on. But uh, now we're going to go to a break and be right back for game number four. Raynad stands at 2-1 above Life Coach right now. But game four still got to get underway. Life Coach needs two more wins, and he's got Warlock and Paladin left to do it with. And Raynad just needs one more with his Freeze Mage. Yeah, everything's been going Reina's favor here, except that last Alex Trotter did not t uh, decide to show up at all. Now, going into the next game, Warlock or Paladin, it's, it's really a, a tough call. I would, I would say that Warlock is, is the favorite one, but do you actually pick the favorite one? Is, is it the other thing? And maybe there's like a hidden card in Paladin we don't know about, but there's a lot of heal at least, so 
I think it's doable. I think it's going to be really close who takes the series at this point. Yeah, the big part of this, I think, is going to be about the pressure that Warlock or Paladin can actually apply in the games mm -hmm. that it's played. If Warlock doesn't get something like a turn four Mountain Giant, I think you're going to see it struggle a little bit. Even if it gets Twilight Drake, you know, four damage is half as much as eight damage would be. Mm -hmm. And with Paladin, sort of the same way, you know, you're going to want a strong open. You don't necessarily want Zombie Chow, because I think a lot of times it ends up being a liability versus Freeze Mage. But you want to get Knife Juggler. You want to get Shielded Mini Pot. You want Muster for Battle. You want Piloted Shredder. Those are pretty much kind of the tools you're looking for, is how can we get the ball rolling with aggression to put the pressure on Freeze Mage and force them to answer what's going on. I mean, if you have enough heal pots, you can just power through and eventually the Freedman will die. But I think a big thing is uh, that Livecoat has been known to run Rack sometimes in Handlock. It's been a while since I've seen Rack in Handlock, but maybe about two weeks since. But if he's running Rack, that will be crucial against Freeze Mage, an excellent card. Yeah, that's actually, in my experience playing Freeze Mage so far, that is one of the most problematic threats. I actually fear Ragnaros more than I even fear something like Keys and Mystic, because of the way that those games have been rolling out, just unstoppable in terms of the amount of damage it's providing. Game four. Gonna get underway here, and look at that. You literally just... Is this good enough to keep, actually, in his opening hand because this is such a big threat? Probably not, but it's it's close, I suppose, yeah. Now, uh, the Mountain Giant is going to be crucial. Not having the coin is really bad for Reynard. He really wants that extra draw, that extra freeze uh, to get underway. Now, a Mad Sign is still decent here. I wonder, what do you keep? I think it's either nothing or... yeah. Probably nothing you'd keep with that in Life Coaster. Yeah, I, I can't imagine wanting to keep Sludge Belcher or Shadow Flame or Mortal Coil. And if you're not, the Ragnaros is really interesting to me though. And you can, it looks to me like he's even like kind of tough about this. He's like trying to figure out the math of drawing Ragnaros again by the time he gets to turn eight. I mean, coin Ragnaros is not bad, but turn seven. No, it really is yeah. not. It's, again, it's such a big threat versus Freeze Mage. Mm -hmm. I can't keep my eye off the center here though. It looks like it's got a little mini hero portrait. <laughs> I just <laughs> I can't take my eyes off that now that I've seen it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I think the more important one will be turn for Mountain Giant, uh, but a horrible hand for life, because this is oh just... Oh my gosh. And you see his face, it's just disaster mode here. <laughs> you He's can't a, believe it. Are you serious right now? <laughs> is this simply the worst hand I could have? <laughs> I think coin hero power might even be, might be possible here, yeah, but it's... I think, I think coin hero power here is actually pretty reasonable. Because mm -hmm. if he goes for turn for nothing, you know, then it's just game over. There's, yeah. So probably not coin here, but I think, I think you go you hear upon next turn probably. But it's, this is about as bad as it gets because the Molten Jam, this is effectively useless. The Hellfire is effectively useless. You know, the Belcher is, is weak. <laughs> this is, yeah, rough. I think you do nothing though, if I was him. And a decent time for Reynard. The uh, Doomsayer is not that important as there's a lot of answers. Oh, wow. but wow, uh, like it's picked up too. That's quite decent here. Yeah, he doesn't really need to play the Lepernum, uh, the Luthor, actually, the Lepernum again, but uh, the, the Mad Scientist seems stronger because there's no possibility of uh, like getting Mortal Coiled now. Yeah. Yeah, I like the Mad Scientist a lot better. I would tend to almost always favor thinning the deck out and getting the secret developed versus picking up the extra card. Again, you just want you want higher quality of draws in your deck. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I would rather thin than draw extra cards with Lumber Number first. Speak to me. And the Dr. Boom and Mortal Coil. Mortal Coil, yeah, quite bad. And, and the uh, Dr. Boom really mediocre. The Thorson is excellent, especially with this hand, I'd say. I mean, this is, I mean, it looks to me, I think he's just got a Hellfire. We're actually seeing that here in game number four. <laughs> a coin Hellfire against Freeze Mates of all classes. <laughs> I mean, it is fire, but it's not too much. I, I just, I don't see another reasonable play. I mean, obviously you can't life tap. You can't coin out anything. Sun Tree Protector is just almost pointless. What do you think about next patch incoming? We get the Hellfire to deactivate Freeze. How cool would that be? <laughs> it's like the most uh, melts the freeze yeah. off your characters. No one asks for that update, but yeah, it uh, it uh, really does ha tend to go like that. Yeah, this is uh, this is looking really good here for Raynad. I think it tells a lot about the hand that he actually goes with the Hellfire. 
Yeah, you know, it, it's looking, I said it was looking really good for him, but I'm kind of taking a look at this. And th one of the ways that I've lost a lot with this deck is I just draw too many secrets. Yeah, absolutely. And he's drawn two ice blocks at this point. Mm -hmm. His third secret up now, uh, he's yeah. going for the Doomsayer. I actually don't really mind this because, you know, sort of like you said, one of the things that he minds the most is uh, something like Mountain Giant. It's going to be like one of the most problematic things for him here. And so this turn is buying him sort of like a tempo advantage where next turn he gets to play... I don't know why you'd play Loot Hoarder this turn. I actually would like to see that. Mm -hmm. But it's buying him a, a turn where, you know, he's able to just play Arcane Intellect and Loot Hoarder in the same turn. And then Life Coach is going into his turn five. And the turn five Mountain Giant is not a turn four Mountain Giant. The reason I don't like this as much is that he went for the Coin Hellfire. And I mean, technically he couldn't have played the Mountain Giant, but he could have played the Twilight Vic. So there's still a possibility that there's Mountain Giant, but I think... I'd rather go for the Mountain Giant than the Hellfire if, if that's a possibility. Like a two we can't loot go hoarders. for them turn three, of course, because of the mana, how that works, but yeah. Uh. Yeah, there's two Loot Hoarders in this deck, too. That's something that you don't see too terribly often. Mm -hmm. I used to play that a lot before uh, before Black Rock Mountain, actually. But it's, I, I've gone off it now, especially because need to fit the uh, Thorson in somehow. Lots more card draw being found for Raynad now. And two Blitz... Oh, my gosh. Well, that's a slam. That is a windmill slam off the top of the deck. And I think I think Life Coach's face pretty much sums it up. Yeah, he, he just can't believe this is actually happening. He's, he's, this is going to be really rough. But I think like the main thing about the Loot Order, it's really good against Druid, which is a rough matchup for Feast If you can get like Mad Scientist, Loot Order, you can deal a lot of damage, maybe put him to 25 or something. And also, even or, or Force Removal, which is, you know, just mana for the Druid, but... Uh, Life Coach actually doesn't even have a way to kill this outside of using Hellfire or silencing this. And the silence is not a very effective tool because your opponent gets to keep a 5-5 five, five body. Mm -hmm. And you can put him down to 15, and that's... I mean, considering that he's used the Thoros on, that could be just lethal. I mean, you could have, you yeah. could just see uh, fireball combinations that would just devastate Life Coach, but... So I think he will have to taunt up if something, but it's... Uh, I think Owl, Sun of Fury is probably the only manageable play here. E or tap even. Maybe he needs to die and I can't tap it OP. Yeah, I can't tap yet. Too much, yeah. Mm. Owl, tap, Sun of Fury. I guess that's where he's going for, yeah. Yeah, he's got to get the attack into. Oh my gosh, Defender Vargas is one card down. Wouldn't that have been nice, but it's so brutal. A lot of health though, there. Uh, 31 health now on turn 7, not what he wants to be in wow, 18. Wow, and a flame strike. How often do you see Handlock with lower health than for Freeze Mates, you know? Like, just from the minions, there's not been no spell to the face at this point from uh, Reynard. Just like, there's no heal bots in this hand either. There's no Lothab, there's no heal bots. He's got both Molten Giants. He drew the Defender a turn late. This has just been such a... It's been such an awkward pan out for Life Coach. He hasn't had an opportunity to really get the ball rolling on anything. The uh, hand of Reynard, though, is weak as well, uh, we have to add, but uh, it depends. Like, Handlock wants to be at 18. That's a perfect life total for him, you know. He doesn't want to get below or, like, way above that as well. So often, you maybe put the Handlock at, like, 13, and then does he do, go for a heal pot? Because you could burst him down, or what does he do? At 21, they can, you could Alex Tarsa back, but I think, I think Reynard's hand is suboptimal at this point. And this is not what you want at all. So you just got to heal button there too. Yeah, I think you just throw the blizzard at this point, but it's it's painful. Oh, it runs out on me. Is there any merit to like loot order, frost nova? But still, uh, I don't know. I don't like that. No, I don't mind blizzarding here. Mm -hmm. I think blizzard here is great. <laughs> I think you're totally fine with it. Yeah. At 31. Dude. And he wants to draw, I guess, burst so so badly, so he's going for the draw. I mean, maybe he, he reckons, I guess, that you know. Even if he went for Doom Doomsayer, it would just get silenced or, or siphoned easily, you know, and yeah. he doesn't really want to be going for turn 10 Antonidas Force Nova. Watcher gets drawn. Useless at this point. There is, a, I mean, there is a lot of poor draws in his deck still at this point. Like, even something like Dark Bomb isn't very good here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, more taunts obviously aren't going to be good. What is good for like, what would be a good draw at this point, actually? Healbot, I suppose. Uh, but. Yeah, I think Hilpa would be about the best. Lothep <laughs> maybe has it, but it's it's not for sure. What do you think about this Doctor Booming here? It's painful, but maybe the one he needs to go for. I feel like he's got to alleviate the, the mana in his hand somehow. Mm -hmm. I wonder. 
Like, he's got taunts up. This is probably, like, the last turn that taunts are going to even be relevant in this game. I don't know. I think you go for Emperor. I'm just thinking you may need to be in a bit of a hurry, but I guess Emperor frees up a lot of mana, but the mana to do what exactly with this hand? That's the awkward thing at this one. Uh, I think it's married to both plays. Yeah. Don't mind this at all. I don't, I don't disagree with you. I think there's a lot of merit to both plays. <laughs> but nine free mana per turn is just nothing too. Yeah. <laughs> Not too bad there. Now, Doomsayer doesn't do much, but there's actually no answer to it in. Uh, Life goes his hand when you look at that. Yeah, I mean, it's it's almost certainly just going to be a flame strike and, and probably a trade here. It really depends on what this draw. This, I don't know. Like, if this draw a fireball here, is he just going to go face instead? I don't think I would flame strike here, actually. What do you think about just visiting again and making him build up a bigger board and then go for the one? Yeah, Given the second activation of Thoris on that, though. That's, oh, that's of course, yeah, of yeah. course. Well, what am I saying? Okay, definitely not then, yeah. Didn't think about that one. Well, I, it's not it's not an impossibility though. I mean, how mm -hmm. important is the second activation? You know, he's basically just trying to not die. And he, he's getting off the impression that he has a bad hand. So yeah, the second yeah. activation. It's still it's a lot of cards. That's the big big thing. You the, know. the the only thing I'm I'm seeing about the second activation not being that big of a deal is that he knows that Life Coach is playing like a really grindy version of this deck. He's not going to have something weird like arcane golems and power and stuff like that. Yeah. So I don't think that he minds giving him the extra time. Absolutely. That being said, I, I mean, I think he is going to trade here. Oh, wow. He goes straight to the dome. That is aggressive, and I actually really like it. It is, but this he doesn't... Is so much pressure. Because, like, think about how Life Coach feels about Raynad's range in a spot like this. Mm -hmm. It feels like Raynad's got the burn to kill you right now. That's what I was talking about earlier. You don't want to put him a 10. You don't want to put him... In 14-ish. So you threaten lethal, and he has to play either Jiraxus, which is, you know, with two health, which is nothing, or... or which, I mean, life Coach doesn't tend to run Jaxus, but a lot of handlers do, or he goes for the heal bot for not a lot, lot of value there. He actually no. doesn't even have a heal bot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Either too. Hasn't drawn it yet. Uh, I mean, does, isn't he maybe just forced into, I guess, not playing around it? Maybe just going Molten Molten Defender and, and uh, ignoring this? I mean... Oh, it's, gosh. That feels so ugly. It does, especially since the Thorson has come down and stuff costs less, but... I mean, Reynard actually doesn't have the hand for this, but let's say that he does go for the huge value from the flame strike. The thing is, at this point, you know, Life Coach is not going to deal deal real damage for the next what three, four turns with the Blizzard, Blizzard, you know, like all all that fees coming down. I yeah, I don't think it's likely at all. Yeah, I, I pretend to agree with you. And then in three turns when he starts to do damage, you know, Reynard has 31 health and Ice Block and another Ice Block. It's just not in the cards here. Well, there's a Frost Bolt, so he's picked up seven damage now. Mm -hmm. But again, as you were mentioning, he really he needs more time to get all this stuff done. What do you do here? Do you just, like, Blizzard, I suppose? Yeah, I mean, this looks like a pretty easy Blizzard to me. Ice Block and Pink Face, maybe? Hmm. Do you, do you oh, no, wait, you're going to leave a third kill, 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 kill on? Kill on, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I, at this point, you know, how much, what's the difference between a third one and a second one? I mean, your opponent's already gotten so much value out of it. Mm -hmm. Are you even really worried about it anymore? That is true, yeah. Uh, I mean, if, if you don't have a first spot, it would be lethal anyway. Like, at that point, but it, it's. Yeah. It wouldn't be lethal anyway, what am I saying? Uh, but, uh, uh, Fireball would be lethal, is what mm -hmm. you're. Yeah. Yeah. Ice Lance would be 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Ice Lance would be one off. Yeah, I mean, I suppose there is some merit to pinging face. You do increase your outs um, by by one, which, I mean, that's that's a 50% increase in outs, though. Mm -hmm. It's kind of funny. He's playing ramp decks. It seems to be all three ramp decks, you know, and all three have Thorazon and all three have heals. And almost mind control. I don't think the handlock has the mind control deck, but it's the same playstyle over and over with all three decks. So. Maybe his thing is, okay, he may run into a hard counter, but he didn't run into three hard counters. That's not likely. Yeah. Whereas, I mean, Reynard has two of the hard counters to that kind of play style, but not the third here. Well, there's finally a Mountain Giant. C3 turns late. Mm -hmm. I kind of like Boom as well there. Like, Boom Sylvanas over Mountain Giant at this point, though. The thing is, like, if you can get him low enough, you... 
the boom actually boom pod on your turn goes through the icebox. So. Do you like that better than just mountain giant sled culture? No, he just wants the full power on the board, so. I think so. He's, he's in a big hurry now with her 13 health. I'm imagining. Uh, oh my gosh, six. It's 11 here. Yeah. yeah. This looks like, I mean, this is a pretty easy, like, Frost Nova Doomsayer turn. I don't know, he just got to be worried about, about Healbot, though. Mm -hmm. You know, he doesn't want to give Life Coach, like, one turn to draw a Healbot. Did you just go Blizzard, maybe? Healbot? What to do? No, I think you got to ping face here. Like, when you draw mm -hmm. the, the damage here, you have to ping face him. Yeah. How do you feel, though? Would you recommend the... Uh... Oh, Frost Nova, for sure. Mm hmm I mean, my, my thing about not going for the Frost Nova would be, I guess, you don't need the mana at this point, and uh, you don't want the bombs to explode when you're at low health, you know? Yeah, I, I think there's also like a very small chance that your opponent like maybe would play Heal Bot and them mm -hmm. in the same turn, and I think it's something you want to avoid. Yeah. Oh, wow. Why, why would he not ping there? Yeah, I think it's just, yeah, I think you're right about that. It doesn't change the fact that, that he has no way to deal with this, uh, except like, uh, I suppose, a uh, Shadow Flame, yeah, which would not be good at all. I think you Shadow Flame the Molten Giant. Molten well, over the, just because of the uh, health difference? Mm -hmm. I think the health is more important than that. I don't know, I, I actually, I disagree with that. I think that you need the power more right now. But I, you should just calculate other ways. That's something it's probably going to end up doing. Mm -hmm. But right now, it's like, are you really worried about another flame strike? Like the second flame strike from your opponent? Mm -hmm. Like how much difference is Blizzard going to be making? Um, you know, I suppose like Blizzard sheep, it's probably inconsequential. Mm -hmm. Seven and eight power here are probably going to get the, the job done in the same number of turns, mm -hmm. considering everything else that's going on on the board. So I guess in that regards, you probably do just favor the health. The biggest issue he's facing right now is what Life Coach is facing is does he life tap? I think a big thing is he was wishing that he kept the rag from earlier, I suppose. I wonder. So this is gonna be like for sure. It depends also like what, how well he has studied Reyna, that if he knows he has only one uh, flame strike. If he knows he has only one flame strike, obviously still playing the Doctor Boom is better, but it's, it's still. It's well, really that is gonna be enough to More do than it. More enough, yeah. And Reyna goes through the round of eight. I would venture to say that's even an upset to be life coach now. Uh, if want. Yeah, I, I think that in terms of just you know, the players individually, I would consider this an upset. But when you really take a look at the way this lineup is working, the big again, the biggest way I think to pressure life coach is just to put him in situations where he's facing a tremendous amount of aggression. Mm -hmm. And while Phrase Mage really looks like a control deck, it's very much in the same vein as something like Miracle Rogue, where your, your goal is to just draw lots of cards, keep control of the board, and then kill your opponent with a giant burst at the end. Mm -hmm. And that is honestly a pretty aggressive strategy, all things considered. I mean, he had two hard counters right off the bat there, may not, and, and the third deck, I mean, like something often eventually goes wrong. If you have, even though he has three decks that are strong against it, you know, like you saw that like in the handlock, there was no rag drawn, there was no Lothar drawn, there was no heal pot drawn, so it just fell out of hand. Pretty fast there. Yeah, he kind of had free reign over what's going on, but you know, to really to his credit, he did play the freeze mage games pretty excellently. Absolutely, yeah, well um, played. Him. Really, really like, I you know, arguably no mistakes mm -hmm. being made in those games, and just 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 great. The build is strong. It's like it's such a good tournament, I think, to play it in right now. It's yeah. just it's such a strong deck in general. Mm -hmm. And then really recognizing, you know, one of the biggest points to me was just his utilization of Doomsayer and making sure that he's keeping tempo control over the game. You know, throughout pretty much every step every step of the way and then really utilizing Emperor Thoris on mm -hmm. on turns where it's gonna be just maximum powerful. It's just it's just so great stuff. Anyways, so this match is gonna be wrapped up. Raynan's gonna take it three games to one and uh Frodan and a couple of the other guys got some analysis for you at the desk, so we're gonna throw it to them so they can give you the post game. Well, thank you so much, Admirable and Caldi. And looks like Rand is uh, the first person from Group C to advance to the round of eight and get that sweet Life Coach goes to Gamer ranking. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, Life Coach had a lot, so yeah. he's been taking them. And that means Rand advances in first place. Initial With thoughts, two guys. 2 0. Initial thoughts? Uh, well, as I said, Rand's lineup was really great against Life Coach, so no surprise here, at least in my opinion. There was my, like. Maybe one thing I would have done differently when it comes to the game, and I would have kept the Ragnaros against the uh, against the Reynas Freeze Mage. Maybe that could have changed something because Ragnaros is basically um, without the Polymorph is basically an auto win mm -hmm. against the Freeze Mage because the Freeze Mage has to sacrifice so much burst damage for the for the Ragnaros, and if if, if it's not viable, then you lose the matchup. 
against anyone. That's true. It felt like, like, like what the casters were saying, like even just two of the, the, the decks that Rain had brought, the Zoo and the, the Face Hunter, is great against that ramp style that Life Coach seemed to favor Aqua. Uh, you were watching this pretty closely as well. Anything that you noticed uh, specifically that stood out to you about the series? Uh, no, it kind of went how Paper kind of said it would. Uh, the lineups Rain had had were really powerful against Life Coaches. Um, I think that what, what may, would have made a difference in the picking if Life Coach had picked Handlock into Zoo at any point. That might have changed things a little bit because yeah, he, that's true. he would have beaten the Zoo more than likely, and then he would have had the Druid going into the, uh, the Freeze Mage. So it might have changed things up depending on how the lineup went. But other than that, it was just kind of like a clean-cut game uh, set, really, from the lineups. Yeah, I'll yep, take a look true. at the Group C, uh, how it actually panned out. We had Bunny Muffin and Tang play on the Challenger stage, which was the secondary. Uh, and Bunny Muffin got 0-3 by Tang. So Again, means... right? No, no, no. It no was that, three... was, that was the first time they played, because Bunny yeah, okay. Muffin played against Life Coach to start off, and then he got uh, eliminated. So it looks like Tang will be playing against Life Coach, while Raynad, of course, is advancing first place. The Korean player, maybe he's playing a lot better off stream. I think maybe some nerves definitely came into play when he was playing on the main stage. Well, yeah, well, he just free owed Bunny Muffin, and Bunny Muffin uh, played pretty well in the last game. There's only, like, a few little things. So maybe we'll see what Tang's really got you know, behind his decks, behind sure. his play now. That's right. Uh, Life Coach up against uh, Tang. How do you think that stacks up, Lothar? Because you'll probably be going to cast that match. Yeah, well, in this situation, I would favor Life Coach here. He, I think Life Coach is almost the perfect player when it comes to decisions in games. He... Almost every Life single coach is the perfect player. Yeah, Lothar really. 2015. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just remembering it, man. I'm ingraining that into my brain. Okay. Uh, well, I still, I still uh, would say that second time he's playing almost perfectly every single game, and it, I favor him in almost every single match, unless the the lineups are really favoring the second the second player. In which case, you did pick Reyna in the yeah. previous series. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, but do you agree with that? Do you think uh, Life Coach plays perfect every single time? Almost perfect, I would say. I mean, we, although it didn't matter in the end, we saw him actually rope out five damage before. It didn't matter, but he, he still won that series as far as I remember. But overall, I think he does play. He's one of the top, the top dogs of perfect plays. Uh, anyone else that can compete with him? Not off the top of my head, though, so perhaps he is. But against Tang, um, we've seen Tang make a massive misplay this tournament already. So compared to like Life Coach, who we know plays very well, that gonna, could really weigh up. I'm going to tag an S to that and say massive misplays. And it's not even the, the quartermaster one. That's, mm -hmm. in the end, minor, considering how far ahead he was. It's yeah. more of the grand decisions, you know, not playing Tyrion, going for Dr. Boom. Yeah. Your opponent is often wide open. Yeah, 12 health. Is that the most secure? Like, that kind of stuff. Uh, it didn't really pan out in his favor. Mech Mage trading too much instead of going for the face, not yep. pinging his that's, knife juggler. That's the same mm, with Banner Muffin. That was the same situation, I think. They were both playing, like, too conservative. And mm -hmm. trading too much, playing too safe. That's the one of the... Um, like, uh, when you're new to the scene, new to the bigger... Um, Esports broadcast, you can play to save because you're feeling like right. not safe at all as a person. Yeah, because the fear of being knocked out is a bit too strong, I think, as a new player sometimes because you want to make your impact on the scene. You want to show people what you're capable of. So you might fall back into this defensive, conservative play like you've been talking about where really taking the initiative and being aggressive is sometimes the way forward that you might lose yep. the game if you don't do that. And I think one moment... In Bunny Muffin's game, for example, when he had that Baron Geddon on board, if he had executed the Sludge Belcher... The same he turn, had, he right. played the Baron Geddon, yeah. Yeah, exactly. He had that seven damage sitting there next turn to hit him, and then he had the Death Spites following up. So he could have won that series uh, with that Baron Geddon play, but he was playing well, safe. He was saving his resources. You know, it's not guaranteed for the series, but... It oh, that game, yeah, sorry. Yeah, but you, you try to reach for the win and not try to be safe and be alive for the next turns when you just pr prolong the game uh, without any real, real reason for that. Yeah. 
Well, uh, that means Buff Bunny Muffins is the first eliminated from Group C. That means he came all the way here from the U.S. and unfortunately scored just as good as Frodo did at Sea Story Cup. He went <laughs> one to six. So, uh, well, ah, yeah, well, I guess I, me and him have a lot in common then. We're both from the States and we both went one six. Better luck next time, Bunny Muffins. And that means Life Coach will be playing up against Tang from Korea coming up on stream after this quick commercial break. So don't go anywhere. More hearts in action.